Hey y'all, Taker here, and welcome back to my channel. Today we have yet another massive Ami Ami haul. This time we're going over our August 2024 uh, pre orders. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, here we have Ninome Inanis's Deluxe Nendoroid, or otherwise known as Ina. And technically, she is not one of my August pre-orders. She came out quite a while ago. I believe it was the beginning of June. But um, unfortunately, I had the misfortune of um, having her get lost in the UPS mailing service. So that was very inconvenient but we finally have her now. And now I swear, I have a Nendoroid addiction because I keep on saying I'm gonna stop buying them, but uh, I don't. But I will always give an exception to my Oshi, Ina. I have two VTubers who I really, really enjoy, and that is um, Mori Calliope and Ina. And the funny thing about this figure is that not only did she go through shipping issues, um, but I actually, so I, it must have been like, I dreamt that I pre-ordered this figure because when I was on Good Smile to get her deluxe edition, I could have swore I pressed pre-order. I could have swore I put in my my, uh, my delivery information and everything. Because once Ina was scheduled for release, I noticed that she wasn't a part of my pre-order list. So I entered absolute panic mode over this figure. Um, thankfully, we were able to work something out, but um, I definitely had to spend a little bit more money on her um, on Mecha Japan. Uh, so, but you know, it's, I, I wouldn't have been happy with the regular version. I feel like it just wouldn't be complete with, without her tentacles that came with her on her deluxe version. And it's been a while since I've unboxed the Nendoroid. They have so many pieces. <laughs> And I swear, once I once I get settled on a position for my Nendoroids, that's just how they're gonna be for as long as they're in my collection. Because uh, changing out all these parts can be such a such a pain in the ass, especially when you have a lot of figures. <laughs> At this rate, I really just need an organizer for my Nendoroids, so I can have an easier time with this. Okay, there we, there we go. That took a bit longer than I anticipated. Now here's Ina, our Eldritch Cutie, and I absolutely love her character design, and it's captured magnificently in this deluxe Nendoroid. I, again, as I said before, uh, the, I just couldn't imagine her being displayed without her tentacles because they are fundamental to her character being that a uh, you know Cthulhu eldritch outer god design who happens to be a cute high school girl and on top of the fact that this design is done by the same artist of Katsushika Hakusai and the rest of the foreigner um, girlies from Fate Grand Order this is a must pick up for me. I, I need to have this Nendoroid in my collection. I, I'm i not really a huge fan of putting together Nendoroids. They're always, <laughs> for some reason, I always fiddle around with it way too long. And once I have a set position that I enjoy, I pretty much never change my Nendoroid ever. Um, so thankfully, Ina comes with very few pieces, even though she's a deluxe model. Uh, she comes with two faceplates, a set of glasses, a Necronomicon, as well as a, um, a hand for holding a pen. 
And finally, she has Takodaki. So she does have a decent amount of variation. Not too much variation for a person where the customization is wasted on me. Now I know I did say that I didn't mind Ina being very bare bones as a deluxe Nendoroid. I still wish that Good Smile bundled in an extra support bowl for her Necronomicon because they only really bundled one support pole with this figure, which is kind of crazy uh, that there's only one support pole to support her various accessories. Uh, so you can only really, with the base kit, you can only pose her Takodaki or her no Necronomicon as floating in front of her. Um, so that's just a little short-sighted of them. Uh, I could always take a support pole from one of my other Nendoroids, but I don't really feel like I need to have to do that, especially when we pay premium for the Deluxe Edition. And I've bought non-Deluxe figures like Bridget, which have all the support poles needed to pose with her various um, accessories. So again, a little short sight of Good Smile, but it's not the end of the world. And there is still a hand piece that's bundled with this figure that allows for you to hold the Necronomicon. So although you can't make it float like some of the reference pictures at the same time as making your Takodaki float, you can still have Ina hold the book instead. This Nendoroid is also probably the heaviest Nendoroid I've ever purchased as well. Um, she, she is a hefty Nendoroid. When you, when you, um, when you're putting her tentacles on, which it has a peg that connects directly into her hair, you kind of need to position her base in such a way where the where most of the tentacles are resting on it because it'll it'll tip her over very easily um so you gotta be quite careful when you're attaching the tentacles you you could end up having ina fall over on herself if you aren't careful but um, other than that, it's a fantastic Nendoroid. I, it, it differentiates itself enough where I could convince myself that this was a Nendoroid that needed to be a part of the collection. I can't wait to pose her with my other Fate Grand Order foreigners like Hakusai and Abby, since ah, the art style is just so, so close to each other where it just works. So right here, we have a lot of um, chibi style figures. I feel like every company has their answer to Nendoroids nowadays. Square Enix's answer being adorable arts. Um, and at least from the promotional photos that I've seen, they looked really, really cool. Uh, I really did like their sharper details compared to uh, the Nendoroids. Uh, they even seem to be more stylized in a way, um, less samey, at least from what I saw online. So we're starting off with unboxing Cloud Strife, and we'll kind of just get through with the rest of them as we go. Already about to lose my shit here. And now, already I can tell you that the assembly of the adorable arts seems so much easier than the Nendoroids. The Nendoroids just have so many, like, close to articulating parts that they're always so finicky to put together. But I am having a much easier time putting together these adorable arts. The pommel comes off, rightly so. There we go. There we 
taking a look at the box art just to make sure I know what I'm doing. All right, that is cloud put together. And there we go. Here is every single Adorable Arts Final Fantasy VII figure that's currently available. Um, it is crazy that we got Zach's, Zach Fair before we even got Barrett or Red. Like, it's, <laughs> it's kind of weird, but um, I, I would assume it's because that they could just use practically the same character model for Zack as they did for Cloud in this case. But let's get into it. Let's start with Cloud. Now clocking in at around the same size as a Nendoroid, but with a significantly smaller head and a greater emphasis on the body, uh, Cloud really appreciates that attention to detail. The little details that are all a part of his soldier uniform just really pop with the Adorable Arts take on the deformed chibi figure style. They really capture the small details on his powderons, the small bolts, as well as the straps, the, the gauntlets, the buckles. Pretty much all of those edgy bits are really captured well in this figure. But really, I think my favorite detail to this figure is his hair. Because his head sculpt doesn't come apart, um, when you switch out his head pieces, it is a fully sculpted head. There is nearly no seams in this figure. Uh, there, isn't, there isn't that very long faceplate removal seam that you can see in all Nendoroids. So this figure really looks like one piece, uh, which I really do appreciate. If you've watched me long enough, you know how much I complain about seam lines. His sword also looks magnificent. Even though the sword is chibi-fied, the Buster Sword really does maintain its heft and largeness in comparison to his body. So all in all, a great overall design. And now we move on to Zack. He's kind of the same deal as Cloud, where he has a very detailed outfit, very detailed soldier outfit, albeit slightly different. This one's the more standardized soldier outfit that a lot of soldier foot soldiers would be wearing. And just like Cloud, he does have an extra face sculpt. His is more of a simple closing eyes or focusing face. Um, and his extra hand parts allow for him to hold his sword vertically. So, again, a pretty simple figure. Not too different from Cloud, essentially. And now this is where we get a little bit more expressive slash impressive. We have Tifa. And, of course, she doesn't have as many big props as the others since she fights with her fists, so she just has her gauntlets on her arms. I mean, she's just really iconic. She has her iconic outfit with her Final Fantasy VII Remake design. It's still a very strong character design, which is expressed very well by this chibi figure. To compensate for the fact that she doesn't have these fancy weapons like the other ones, she actually does come with one of those shakers. I actually liked her combat pose a little bit more, where she kind of like is putting, is throwing her hands up um, paired with her serious face. I think that one looks a little bit cooler to me. That That's the one I'm going towards. If I had more of a, uh, if I had more of a bar set up, I guess, that would be a great figure to have in a bar scene, but having them pose with the rest of my figures, I think I'll just keep her with her her hands up. And Aerith, she is also really impressive. I 
I actually am surprised that her staff is actually metal. I'm not used to some of these chibi figures having non-plastic parts. That is a pleasant surprise. Her character design overall just looks fantastic. They really did capture all the little bits like her bracelets, her bangles, her the, the small details on the skirt of her dress. I really also like her hair sculpt. Her hair sculpt has a very nice coloring as well as just really nice hair strands. Of course, Aerith does have an entirely different head sculpt too. She has a head sculpt where she has her eyes closed as well as a pair of hands that have her praying. And now we have the man, the myth, the legend himself, Sephiroth. An individual who has caused us plenty of PTSD over the years. Figure is just full of aura while also very cute. Um, this is probably the cutest I've ever seen Sephiroth, to be honest. Um, and that's a little bit unnerving. He still comes out with his incredibly ridiculously long katana, which I I will actually say while the Buster Swords for Zack and Cloud looked pretty convincingly big in comparison to their character model, I feel like they didn't make Sethiroth's katana long enough. It almost looks normal. Like <laughs> his katana almost looks normal. I feel like it needs to have like an entire extra blade added to the entire sword length because again, like it's looking more like a uh, like a Nodachi instead of being a extra large Odachi. And Sethiroth really is a special child because he comes with even more props than the other four. He, because he is the one winged angel, he has a separate shoulder piece that you can put on that allows you to, to clip on his wings as well as having a support pole so you can support the weight of said wings. Said wings. I would say this one is the most impressive figure in this collection so far. So far, I I really think that these are quality-wise superior to Nendoroids. Um, I might be biased simply because I prefer detail work to my figures, but these these. I can actually like if they I would actually continue buying these even though they are chibi style like Nendoroids. I I feel like they still have that detail work that I enjoy from scale figures but in a chibi form. Now here we have yet another re-release and I'm actually really happy that figure manufacturers have seemed to be re-releasing a lot of older figures because first of all it helps make sure that the figure market is a bit healthier that we aren't having figures selling for ludicrous prices and it allows me to get um, to really go through my wish list of figures that I just wasn't around for when they released uh, like this Megamine is specifically a limited edition special figure for the, to celebrate the release of Konosuba the Legend of Crimson movie. So she's in a rocker outfit. Um, don't ask me why she's in a rocker outfit. Um, I don't actually know the answer to that question to why she's in a rocker outfit instead of her um, archmage outfit. Uh, but I guess rock is very, is a very explosive type of music, so that might be the case. So another thing that strikes me interesting about this figure as well is the fact that Katakawa, the manufacturer of this figure, they actually re-released her at the same exact price that she was released at when she was first 
release, so 2019. 2019, she was selling for 16,000 yen, or $100, and she is again selling at 16,000 yen at $100. And that is, that is pretty off-brand, especially for Katakawa. Um, between Katakawa and Mega House, they're almost like in the running for selling overpriced re-releases. So yeah, I put this around her. Oh wait, I should check if the head comes off. And it doesn't. Looks like I'm <laughs> uh, back again with the uh, straps. Oh, oh, well the strap comes apart. Okay, that helps significantly. There we go. Now here we have Megumin of the Crimson Demon Clan in her Rockstar outfit. And I will say, I <laughs> I can't lie, I was pretty excited for this figure. I don't really have that many Konosuba figures. Well, I had a Megumin pop-up parade at some point in my collecting journey. Uh, but I ended up selling her because of my falling out with pop-up parades in general. So, <laughs> I regrettably don't have anything of my favorite character from Konosuba. So, getting this figure is just me making up for my lack of Megumin. And I was really entertained by this figure because... I just love it when they put a character in a different outfit that they wouldn't usually be in. Because uh, it just, I, I just find it very creative. Uh, it really expands on the character's personality and their plays around with these little aspects. Like, even though she is in a completely different outfit, this is still 100% Megumin. And although this figure is about five years old now, I feel like she still holds up in this, in the 2024 figure market. Uh, she does have a kind of unseemly hair seam in the front of her head, but it's not anything I haven't seen before. And after reviewing a bunch of bootlegs, I mean, I, I feel like I've seen what the worst can look like. So she she definitely gets a pass there. I, I really do like her shirt, though it is at this point outdated. Anime Japan 2019 was five years ago, as I said before, half a decade. Like, I have seen some comments on my figure collection that it is strange that a figure like this did get a re-release. I can only assume it's because the third season of Konosuba came out recently, so it's just Katakawa just trying to collect our money, just get into our wallets, and this was available to just throw out and see if anyone would bite, and I was one of those people. The fishnets combined with the jean shorts is a great look. And it goes down into these platform boots that will make her go from, what, 5 foot to 5'3". So she's really trying to get those inches with those boots there. I wish there was an extra hand piece that, so I could pose her without the guitar. I feel like her outfit looks so awesome that the guitar kind of distracts from it a bit. So I'd love to pose her without it, but she has this really unsightly peg in the middle of her hand. Um, yeah, instead of putting a peg on her keytar, the peg is in the palm of her hand. So it's very obvious when the keytar is not placed in her hand. Now, we've talked a lot about a crimsoned-eyed girl. Now, what about a crimsoned-eyed dragon? There we go. So here we have Red Eyes Black Dragon. Okay. 
And may I just say, this box is absolutely sick. They really, really did my boy good with this box design. If you haven't figured it out by my taste in red-eyed explosion wizards, I am a massive fan of Red Eyes Black Dragon. There we go. Kinda cursed to see <laughs> Red Eyes Black Dragon with no wings on yet. Uh, let me fix that real quick. All right, relatively simple assembly. That is a relief. Uh, this is turning out to be a little challenging. Okay, there we go. Just had to angle it. Yeah, that's tough. But it does feel very secure though. Let's see if I can get that in further. All right, I think that's the furthest I'll get that. Ta-da! I'm fanboying so hard right now. Like, I can't even really express how awesome this figure is. It, it has so much dang aura. Uh, first of all, the wingspan is just so wide. Like, he does take up a lot of space. This is a big figure. At around, I think, with the tip of the wing, I think he's just roughly 13 inches. So, big boy indeed, which I am glad he is. I, I was a little scared he was going to come in smaller. I didn't really do a lot of research on how big of a figure um black blue red eyes i almost said blue eyes i almost said blue eyes we don't speak that name here but i <laughs> i wasn't quite sure how large red eyes black dragon would be uh or how small it would be on the flip side since i frankly i saw that it was the holographic edition and he was up for pre-order so i really just bought him without thinking <laughs> I am happy to say that he meets my expectations and how magnificent a red eyes black dragon, how how imposing a red eyes black dragon should look. I mean, I'm not a hundred percent sure what the difference between the holographic edition of red eyes black dragon and the regular one is. I'm assuming that the holographic one is a bit shinier, and if that's the case. I can see it. The, this this figure has just a really nice sheen, a really nice luster to it. The texture on the wings looks leathery. It looks very realistic in terms of how a dragon's wings should look like. Uh, we have what looks like muscle definition in the legs, some weathering to its body, uh, what almost looks like vein lines and stuff like that. The absolutely magnificent scale pattern that the tail all the way up the spine and into the head has. The colors, the orange-red colorway that the horns and the wing talons have that really complement the nice black that this figure has. The metallic claws that are on the talons of this dragon uh, like i could just go on and on but it just looks magnificent i also really do like the base he is standing on what looks like molten lava which is a great touch really adds even more color to this figure i i would say the one aspect that i feel like is missing is the signature red eyes like the eyes are more black than they are red which is kind of in kind of a missed opportunity uh but i i'm not really bothered by it i mean that's also a very simple fix if that 
really bothers me too much. Just go in there with some red paint and call it a day. And I will make a correction. This figure does have red eyes. I, it's just that the lighting is different. It's, it's, not, it's less of a bright red and more of a dark burgundy. So in certain lighting, the eyes will look darker than usual. Uh, it is still a weaker point to me because I feel like, especially the holographic edition, they should be more of a shining bright red versus a dark burgundy color. Uh, but the figure itself just pays so much homage to one of my favorite versions of this card. I believe it's the second edition. I, I don't think it's the first card that was released. I'm not actually sure how editions work, but there is a different portrait that they use for one of the Red Eyes Black Dragon cards, and it looks very similar to how this figure is designed. And that is really my favorite card. Like, in my opinion, this is, this definitely screams out to my childhood. Like, my inner child is satisfied with this figure. It's kind of the figure that I feel like I always needed, but I didn't know I needed it till I saw it. So I'm really happy I, I, uh, I pulled the trigger and got this figure. And of course, thank you very much for joining me on this anime figure review. If you liked what you saw, please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. See ya!